Today, we're installing a Lutron Caseta switch. So, if you're using one of these platforms and looking at installing a Lutron Caseta switch, stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff, and if this is your first time here, at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using smart home tech. When I got started building my smart home, I gravitated to the cheapest smart home tech I could find. I still do in most cases, and it's one of the reasons you won't find any Philips Hue stuff in this house. And it's one of the reasons I've avoided Lutron Caseta. Because there are definitely cheaper smart switch options out there. But when one of my GE Z-Wave smart switches died recently, I was in need of a replacement, and I decided to give Lutron Caseta a try. So I suspect the big question is going to be why not just replace it with another Z-Wave switch? And I considered that. Z-Wave has been extremely stable, and I already have the Z-Wave integration set up in Home Assistant, which is probably the hardest part. But my reason for picking Lutron Caseta was that these devices come with their own hub. And I get that's going to be a deal breaker for most people. If this hub had been built by a company with a history of bricking older versions just to get people to buy the newer version, it would have been an easy no. But Lutron has been around for a long time, and they're well regarded in the smart home space for their reliability. But the biggest benefit that I get with the Lutron Caseta Smart Bridge is these devices can connect to multiple smart home platforms directly at the same time. And that's not something I can do with Z-Wave today. So why not take advantage of that? If for some reason my Home Assistant instance goes down, these switches will already be connected to Google Home and Amazon, which means that I still retain voice access even without Home Assistant running. And if I decide to switch smart home platforms in the future, Migrating my Caseta switches will be way easier than migrating my Z-Wave ones. And I don't give up local control with the Caseta system. So while adding another hub does increase my failure points, it does allow me to future-proof my smart home. No doubt someone is saying Wi-Fi switches are cheaper, and you get the same Direct Connect abilities. And they're not wrong. But they also live on my wireless router, and they have the potential to impact my non-smart home devices. Now, I'm not sure how realistic that is with smart switches, but I currently have 51 devices on my wireless network, and I currently have 42 hardwired switches. If I was to replace every one of those with a Wi-Fi switch, that would nearly double the amount of devices on my Wi-Fi network, and I suspect I will be adding non-smart devices more in the future. The Lutron Caseta system allows me to add these smart devices without increasing the number of devices on my Wi-Fi network. Since this was my first Lutron Caseta switch, I purchased a starter kit off of Amazon for $94. And in the kit, I got this. Instructions, the switch with a snap-on faceplate, the smart bridge, a network cable, a jumper wire, and some wiring hardware. The switch that I'm replacing is a GE smart switch that controls the living room fan. And unfortunately, the location of this particular game box is sandwiched between some bookshelves and a pillar. So swapping it out was a tight squeeze, especially with a camera involved. Now, if you're not comfortable replacing a hardwired switch, then stop right here and call a professional. Making a mistake in this part of the process can result in serious injury or even death. So make sure you understand all that is involved. And if I haven't made it clear, I'm definitely not a professional when it comes to electrical work. So verify everything I say before you attempt this yourself. The first thing I did was turn off the breaker and then make sure it was off using my flashy stick thing to test. Which is especially important in game boxes that contain a three-way switch like this one. Because it could be powered by two different breakers, at least in my house. And if you forget to make sure the power is off, the switches have a way of letting you know. And you won't like it. Because my neutral in all of these is just all wired together, I had to pull two switches out to get everything hooked up. Just make sure you keep track of what wires are what when pulling them out of the old switch. Wiring the new switch was pretty easy, and the process is well documented in the instructions that come with this switch. From the switch, connect the green wire to the ground. The red wire goes to the load wire. The black wire goes to the hot wire. And the white wire goes to the neutral wire. Since I'm not using this switch as a three-way, we can just cap the blue wire with a wire nut. Then after we get it all wired up, we stuff it back in the box. And then put the plate back on, 
and it's time to flip the breaker back on. All right, we got a green light on our new switch. Time to set up the smart bridge. If you haven't already downloaded the Lutron app on your phone, do that next and then fire up the Lutron app. You will need to create an account if you don't have one already, but then you'll get a screen asking you to plug in your bridge. After that, click next on your app. Once it discovers your bridge, it will update the software. Then it will ask you to tap the button on your bridge to begin the pairing process. Next, you get an opportunity to name your home in the app. Click next, then set your time zone. And now we can add a device. For my switch, I just hold down the switch for 10 seconds, then choose its location. Add the device it controls so it picks the right icon. And then we can start adding our new Lutron devices to our various smart home platforms. To add this device to your Echo, open the Madam A app on your phone. Click search and type Lutron. Then click the Lutron one that shows up in your results. Then click enable. You'll need to log in to your Lutron account and then click authorize. Then after it discovers your device, you should see it in your list of devices. And if we dig into this device, we can see that it's connected through the Lutron skill. So now you have access to this device in your Amazon Echo, either through voice command or by adding it to a routine. The setup on Google Home is going to be about the same. Open your Google Home app on your phone. Then click the plus in the upper left to add a new device. Choose works with Google. Scroll down or search for Lutron. Click on it and supply your login. Authorize the connection and you should see a message that Lutron is now linked. The app should now take you back to the main page and ask you to choose your device you want to add and click next. Choose your home and click next. Pick the room that this device is in and click next. And now you can ask Google Home to turn on this device or add it to your Google Home routines. If you're someone that's still using SmartThings, fire up your SmartThings app. Click Add. Here, it might be easier to change to Brand. Then search for Lutron. Once you find it, you can choose the type of device, Switch in my case. Then it will ask you which room this device is going to be in. And then you get that familiar login screen. Authorize the connection, then click Done. This will discover your device. Click the devices you want to add and choose your device. Then click done and then done. And now SmartThings can control your Lutron Caseta switch. For those of you using HomeKit, just fire up your Home app. Next, scan the code on the bottom of your hub or enter it manually. It will show up as a bridge. Click on it and then select the location of the bridge. I renamed mine to Lutron Bridge to be a little more descriptive. Then it identified my switch. So I updated the name to Living Room Ceiling Fan, and now you can see my fan in HomeKit, which is looking a little lonely. But now you can ask Siri to control your device. And lastly, let's add this device to Home Assistant. For that, we'll use the built-in Lutron Caseta integration. So head to Configuration and Integrations. As you can see, Home Assistant already discovered them. But if you don't see it, you can click the blue integration button in the lower right. Then in the box, search for Lutron Caseta. I'm not sure why it sees two, but in any case, click on configure. Now you'll need to hit the pairing button on the hub like we did with the Lutron app on our phone. Once you do that, it will kick off the pairing process. When it's done, it will show you the smart bridge and let you choose an area. A moment later, it finds my ceiling fan and I pick an area, then click finish. Since the previous switch was called Living Room Fan, I want to update the name to match. That way, I don't have to go and change any automations, scripts, scenes, or my Lovelace dashboard. Of course, this only works if you've deleted or removed the previous switch. And that's it. One switch connected directly to five different smart home platforms. Six if you consider the Lutron app, which has the ability to create schedules and scenes as well. As far as this switch goes, I really like it. It responds fast no matter which platform I trigger it from. But these switches do take some getting used to if you're coming from a traditional paddle style switch. Instead of having one switch that has a single rocker or a paddle that can indicate on and off, this switch has two dedicated buttons, one for on and one for off. And if you're moving from a smart switch like a GE or a Levitron, the Caseta switch is completely silent. No click when you manually turn it on or when it gets turned on or off via automation. So if you're used to sitting in a room and telling time based on which switches are clicking on and off, then you're probably going to need to invest in a clock. The only real issue I have with these switches is they don't blend well with my other smart switches. 
When using my existing faceplates, my other switches stick out a bit, and these are flush. But I expect to be replacing more of my Z-Wave switches with these Lutron switches in the future, which should solve that. Because their three-way switches with the Pico remote look way easier to install than the Z-Wave ones. That's all the time we have for this video. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.